Hi everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new to the channel, welcome back. So um, here we have part one of the build of this beautiful ICM 135th scale Sikorsky CH54A Tarhi, um, and it's a sky crane. So it's a kit we've a lot of us have been waiting for for a very long time from when it was announced. And um, I've managed to get hold of one, and uh, here we are, we're going to start a build on it. I'm going to start by saying my videos tend to be around about the hour. Um, they do cover a lot of detail. I'm not one of these who just puts a half hour video together, start to finish, and you see a finished model. Um, this will be a multi-part video series, and I will cover a lot of detail and any issues I find with the kit, and, um, and sort of basically go through the whole build. I've asked the question in the past, many people like it that way, some people complain about the length, what I say to them is you can always fast forward, um, but those that want to see the detail and want to see the nitty gritty of the kit, they can't go back and watch it if I do a quick one, so just bear with me. So um, one of the comments that came from, a couple of people commented with the Airfix Spitfire, why do I sort of dart around in instructions? Why don't I sort of do step one, two, three, four, like that? Um, there's a couple of reasons for it. The first one will be sometimes kit manufacturers get their build sequence all out, out, out of kilter. The biggest uh, culprit is Kitty Hawk. They, they do some really silly things. And it's like um, I've noticed on that Academy A10 Warthog from uh, Clive's Modeling Channel. I keep calling Clive's Modeling Mitch. Clive's, Clive's Modeling Channel. Um, he's doing a build of that. And I've noticed in the instructions in that they tell you to assemble the wing halves and then fit all the pylons and weapons and stuff well, before you fit into the fuselage. It's just not the done thing. Quite often they'll tell you to put undercarriage legs into wings or whatever before you fit the wings where they're going to get broken off. So, you know, um, it's like on the uh, torpedo boat build I'm doing with Paul and Chris over on Plastic Monkey's channel. You know, they tell you right at the beginning, fit the rudder, which is flimsier than a flimsy thing on a flimsy day in a flimsy place. Um, and, you know, just decided, no way, put it on the end. It's, it's just going to get broken off. Paul fitted his straight away, broken it off about four times, I think. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a bit of an in-joke there. So um, that's that's one of the reasons. Another one of the reasons is to keep working. Um, sometimes, you know, you may um, get to this point here and you've painted the cockpit. You think, well, I want to keep making a video. I don't want to just stop and wait for a day for the paint to dry. So, all right, I'll go and get on with this assembly here. Um, or I'll get on with this major assembly here. And you, you kind of do that to keep the build going, to keep the video production going. Um, and another reason is what I'm going to do now. Um, and so I'm going to, rather than just do it, I'm going to explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and then I'm going to do it. So um, if we look through the instructions, one of the other things we need to sort with this kit, um, it comes in this very unusual two rigid boxes. If you saw my review, you'll have seen it. We've got two rigid boxes of parts, uh, which could have been a lot smaller. But um, basically, these boxes contain the sprues in bags, and you don't want to have to keep going between one box and the other. So what I'm going to try and do is find a kit box that's um, that's big enough to hold all this, or take the major sprues out with the major parts, like this one here, with the fuselage fronts, and try and get everything combined into one box and just have these sprues on the shelf or something waiting to be used um, because we don't want to be going through the sprues and in and out of the bags and everything and trying to see even which box it's in so that's one of the first things we're going to do um, the other thing I'm going to do while we're here just so I'm explaining what I'm doing rather than you wondering what's going on regular viewers to my channel will have heard me say many times about gluing assemblies together at the beginning and then when you come to use them they're there ready for you to actually glue to uh, use rather than having to wait and do the seam so a perfect example here in step one we've got two halves coming together i'm not sure what these things are i must have a look but you've got these two halves coming together and they're going into the cockpit floor so we're going to glue those together and we're going to have a seam to deal with and obviously you can't deal with the seam until it's dry so what i'm going to do is go through the manual and just mark off where I need to do halves. Um, here's another one here, so we're gonna do that one. Where we've got two halves of something going together, where it's gonna have a seam line that's gonna need cleaning up. Okay, so here's another example here, step 13. So we're gonna do that one. And then we've got the drum. So we're gonna do that, we'll just glue the drum halves together and then we have a seam to deal with. 
um, we can do this one here and we can do this one here okay and we're gonna so we're gonna have all the halves going together that one and that one and we'll have the parts in a box ready when it comes to need them rather than sort of getting to this step or or getting to the step with the drum you know you get to the step with the drum here so you've glued the step to the drum together you're waiting for it to dry they've got to move on now and you can't because the th next thing you've got to do is put the drum in between there so you're waiting around for that to dry while you get before you can get on with that basically so what I'm going to do, I'll just go through the instructions I'm going to mark off the assemblies I'm going to put together and then for those of you that are building along with me because I know you are um, then we will get some parts glued together and you can see basically what I'm doing undercarriage legs I'm tempted to do them now but I think I'm going to leave them in case we decide they're too weak we'll see how heavy the thing is if we decide they're too weak we may have to wait for some aftermarket or do some corrective surgery put some wire in them or something but uh so i'm not going to glue them together now but we've got the actual winch hook we've got the front uh, the front landing gear or the nose landing gear should i say um got this here we've got this spindle for the tail rotor that can go together we've got that one there and it's basically just getting bits together so we if we've got seams to deal with then we can deal with them Okay, so I'm just going to carry on marking these off, be back in a minute. So I've gone through all the way to the end and I've marked off, you can see here, we've got the, like a little tick there on step 190. So that's the, um, that's the tail rotor hub going together all the way through. Now, one thing I will say, um, here I've done the main spindle for the uh, main rotor. So once that's dry, we can get on and we can actually build this main rotor up as an assembly, as I say. And then that way we can build this bit, let it dry. We can do this bit, this bit, let it dry, this bit. Because we've got lots of tiny little bits and pieces going together here. And if you just carry on and just build it all as one, chances are you're going to get something out because it will start moving around and stuff. So that's what I'm going to do there. That's just my theory. I could be wrong, but um, it wouldn't be the first time I was wrong, I can assure you. So um, we're basically going to get all these bits and pieces together. So the first thing I've got to do is go and find them on the bloody sprues and I'm going to go and sort my sprues out and I'll show you what I've done so that I can try and condense everything into one box okay so we've got all our what I've done is sort of split it up as two boxes so we've got all our greeblies and little bits and pieces here I have to be really careful with some of these sprues uh, particularly this one you've got all these tiny parts I'm tempted actually to leave that one out of the boxes completely so as not to have anything on top of it but uh there you go, we've got these four sprues and all the engine parts and everything which we're going to be using in a minute. And then we've got some breeblies in there. And then just that flimsy little sprue there. And then here we have this box with all the major parts, all the major body components. With all the detail on the rivet detail that we don't want to get damaged. So there we go. So, um, right, in fact what I'll do is I'll put that one on top of there. Like that. Right. So what we can do now is make a start on getting the parts together and I'll just uh, cover the first bit. So we want H75. Now I'm sure from memory that H is the sprue that we've got four of. Yes, so I think a lot of this stuff is going to come from H sprue. So we'll get the manual over here at the way because of the, the white balance. So we've got H75 and H74, and we need two of each. So I want to use the sprue that has the parts breaking off of it, because that avoids us risk, the risk of us getting anything lost. So just do that. So we've got H75 and H74. Get my nippers. H75 and H74. There we go, 74 and 75. So straight away we're into these parts. So here's our first cut of tahi. There we go. That's our first cut. So the plastic's lovely, as per usual, ICM. So I'm tempted to keep these two sprues out. So there's 74 and 75. Okay, so we've got those two there ready to go together. And then moving down the page, Oh, we're into sprue G there. I'm going to leave that because I don't want to be getting more. Or is it in this box? I've got sprues everywhere here. Is this one G? No, that one's F. Is this one G? No, that one's D. So there we go. Straight away, 
we're trying to search around for bloody spruce. So I think I'll miss that out for now and we'll come back to that. Um, going over the page. Uh, I've chosen these here which are F. I'm going to get all the H parts done I think. Yeah, this is fallen flat on its face straight away. I was trying to make this easy for the camera. Let me get these parts off the sprue and then we'll start getting them together. Okay, so there we are. We have all the parts off that I've just talked about taking off and gluing together. So now what we can do is go through the manual and just put a line through each part that we've actually taken off the sprue. Just so we know where we are. Go all the way through, do the same thing. Clean them up and then when they're all glued together, we will go through and just make a cross. Okay, so we know that we've glued those parts together. And that way when we get to somewhere, you know, if we're a few weeks down the road and we get to here and we've glued something together, like, hang on, where's those parts? Ah, we glued them together, didn't we? So, and then we'll get like a, a takeaway tub. We'll put those parts in the takeaway tub and then they can sit in the box ready for when we need them. We can deal with the seams and everything when they're good and hard. So uh, I'm going to get these cleaned up and get some glued together. Right, we're cracking on through this. Um, basically, I've gone around and removed the sprue nibs. Just for the newer modelers out there, when gluing wheel halves together, it's quite often often to get the, 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 the cement into the joint without getting it on your fingers. And one of the problems with holding them together like this and then running the cement round is quite often because you've got this, this kind of stepped joint in here, it's very difficult to get enough glue in there to make sure you get a nice solid joint and then you start sanding your tires and maybe putting a flat spot on them or something and you end up with a crack. So um, what I'm going to do is use this Tamiya white glue and as you can see I've got it, the wheel mounted on a stick. I can put plenty of this glue in here and the reason I'm using plenty is it dries out. You don't want it to dry out on you. And then what we can do then is just place that wheel on top of that stick and then squeeze that tire onto it. And that way we've got a nice solid glue joint without getting any glue on our fingers and then getting any glue anywhere where we don't want it. So that wheel is now glued together beautifully. So we can put that in the par. Then all these other bits and pieces as well. This cable drum, I mean the fit, look at that. That's a seam there. It's unbelievable in there. It's beautiful. Really does go together nicely. So um really happy with how this is all coming out. This piece here, this is one of the collective, was it the cyclic levers for the cockpit? Um very very flimsy be really careful with that so uh, there's a lot of very very tiny flimsy parts in here that we need to be a little bit careful with but you can see generally the fit is lovely we've got ejector pin marks in the back of the parts which you need to be aware of because sometimes if there's a little bit of raised flash or something around them then they may cause interference this being a brand new tool we should be okay but if you're if you're sort of six months, a year down the line and you're building one of these, you might want to just check just a quick wipe over just to make sure that you're OK. Um, I'm just looking at this now, gluing this together. I'm not sure that they're, they're telling you in the instructions to glue these parts together. But you can see here there is a, a recess, almost like it's designed to go around something. You know, you can imagine like a, a part coming along with like a T-shape on the top. And then you glue this around it so it can swivel. So I'm just going to quickly check there isn't a mistake in the instructions. Um, they're telling us to fit it to that which is coming off the bottom of the winch. Do, 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 do. Where's the bottom of the winch? It's going to be on the page that I flicked past, isn't it? It's bound to be. Here we go. So you've got that part there. So that's G85. So I'm going to quickly have a look at that part and see if we need to be fitting that around it or on it. Let's have a quick look. Okay, I'm looking at G85. And as we can see there, the end of it is like that. And this is designed to just go on like that. So it is correct. Obviously, the hollow is there to stop any sink marks around the uh, top of the, the hook there. So um, always worth checking these things, especially on a brand new kit. You know, they may may have made a little mistake in the instruction whatever but as you can see everything's fitting together beautifully i'm finding that the pins are almost like a not a snap type fit but they are a friction fit so it's worth um just making sure everything's going together nicely before you start getting the glue out because uh as with a lot of modern kits these days they're designed on a computer and 
that you might give a sort of 50 micron clearance between the pin and the hole but then you get a bit of shrinkage or something on the part with a hole in it and you may end up with a slightly tight joint so you must remember guys a half inch bar will not fit in a half inch hole it'll be it'll probably be a press fit but it won't slide in so they have to bring all that into play when they're designing the kit so what I'm doing with all the parts I'm just going around with a pair of tweezers and just give them a little push just to make sure they go together well a little bit of a seam on there we're gonna to have to clean up but that's the whole reason I'm doing this you see we've got a seam around there where the glue is I'm doing it now so that when I come to use it that seam is solid and dry and we're not gonna to have to worry about you know joints because we all know that when we do the seams and stuff you know we come back two weeks later and we find the seam has come back because the glue the solvents did um, evaporate out of the glue and it actually shrinks you end up with the line so that's why I'm doing all this now right so uh, catch you in a minute okay, so we're pressing through here um, got these tools out of the way uh, just a couple of things to note um, showed you about gluing the tires together done the front leg uh, this all goes together lovely. Um, these parts here, these are D27 and D23 on step 120. Remove the pins. It's got pins and holes that locate everything um, and they actually force it to misalign. So remove the pins and then just use your eyes to, to get everything lined up and everything. This part here, this is step 119. This is G69 and G84. Be very careful that there on there looks just like one of those you know you see an extended for an ejector pin to press on it's not it's actually part of the part so be very very careful be very very careful with the whole model I would suggest because there are very very many small little bits and pieces sticking out of things and it sort of looks like a sprue tab and it's not um, be very careful but generally on the whole I mean these these parts are just going together I haven't removed any of the pins on these or anything and they just go together absolutely beautifully the Tamiya extra thin is working a treat with this it's working really really well um, so that's good news because you know the, the hurricane I did wasn't wasn't very receptive to Tamiya extra thin but uh, just going around and making sure that everything's all nicely lined up and feeling for steps either way pays dividends when it comes to the the sanding and everything and getting the the joints got rid of and all I'm doing is running my fingernail what I've got of a fingernail over the joint just to see that we've got a step both ways and not see that one I've got no step hardly going that way and I've got a step going that way so that means that needs to be just shifted slightly and I have to do this after the glue is just gelled off it makes things stay where they are rather than just springing back so there we go um, pressing on now still got all these parts down here that have got to go together so uh, I'll just carry on just doing these parts here guys this is step uh, 162 and it's parts H67 H66 and H93 and these look like sort of I don't know they're sirens or something you know, like a, a cone horn <laughs> like a lampshade um, they may be lights I don't know but anyway they they go together in in two halves as you can see we got the We've got the half here, the lower half, and then the upper half's going to go on like so, and they're going to go together. Um, and you've got this little piece in the back, I think that was H93, wasn't it? That's got, if I can put this in some tweezers, make sure it goes in the right way. It's got a chamfer on it, you can probably make that out. On the left hand side here, it's got a chamfer, and on the right hand side, it's kind of straight when you look at it from the top. So um, make sure that goes in the right way. What I've done with mine, I've built up four halves and I've made sure I've used the same halves you can see on here we have the angled section of the the cone if you like pointing off to the left so um yeah do it that way and then when you come to put the top ones on it'll all go together nicely very very fiddly and very very difficult to pick up with tweezers because of all the tapers on them they just want to fly across the room so be wary of hungry carpets so I should be I just drop that on the top of there and that should match up on there beautifully there is an ejector pin mark on the inside of these cones 
um, which I've just roughly scraped out with a knife. And I've got glue on my finger there, never mind. Um, I've roughly scraped them out with the knife. I'm going to go around and sand the inside anyway. But we can go around also with some extra thin and just smooth out the inside. And just make sure everything lines up. We've got this bloody glue on my thumb. This uh, flange around the outside there. We've got a flange around the outside there. If you notice, when you've got parts going together like halves like this, I don't bother taking off the sprue nibs because you're going to be cleaning the seam up anyway. And when you cut the sprue nib off, you know, if I cut the sprue nib off of here, now I stand a good chance of digging in and undercutting. Whereas if I do it on a, on a cylinder when they're both together, it's much easier to do and you stand much less chance. When it's like this, you, spend, you stand much less chance of cutting in and basically undercutting the area and leaving a divot in it. So that's how I'm going to do that. And then I can just sand that when it's dry and get it uh, sorted. But we need to make sure the front edge on there is all nice and lined up so we get a nice thin edge. Make sure the edge on there is all nicely lined up, like so. And then that one's done, waiting to dry, and then it can uh, be all sanded and blended out. There we go, there's our uh, assemblies all done. There's 119 parts. Let's just um, zoom you in a bit, if I can. Where's the button gone? There it is. Let's just zoom you in so you can see all those a bit closer. So there we go, that's all. It's 119 parts there. Um, and what I've done, as I said, they got the instructions and gone in and marked off the parts. As I say, it's, it's a good thing to do. I've caught, I've picked up off of mod other modelers on YouTube. Basically, you put a line through the part when it's removed from the sprue and then make it across when you've actually used it. And then if you do, like me, put your models back in your box and come back to them at some point and you're thinking, you know, where's... Where are those parts there? I can't find them. I've already assembled them. So, and then now, as I say, this will all get now put in a Chinese um, takeaway, Indian takeaway tray, whatever, whatever nationality takeaway you have in a plastic tray with a removable lid. Um, then, uh, yeah, go in one of those and, um, and, and that'll be it. They'll just sit there. And then when, as I say, when I come to use them, I think parts like this, we just have a nice seam. We can sand it, remove any marks job done it's all hard it's all dry there's no no risk of anything uh, going back so uh, I'm gonna let this go off now and then we'll come back and I'll make a start on the model properly okay we're back so um, got these parts here cleaned up these are the first parts I glued together that go in the front of the cockpit they are these parts H74 and H75 they sit down the front they're actually fans I've had a look on the reference they're actually fans so I think I'm gonna drill them out so that you can see through them. There should actually be a mesh and a fan inside. So no doubt, Edward, if you're listening, you'll be doing that. And um, I don't know that Edward will be watching this, but if you are, uh, if you want to get in touch, I, I've done quite a bit of research on this now, looking around, and I can see there's a lot of bits and pieces you can make to really make this cockpit pop. Um, I'm thinking... Rather than like the Edard set for the Chinook, for the 35th scale trumpeter Chinook, which is fairly basic. If you look at the Edard cockpit set for the uh, UH-1C from Academy, that's like old school Edward. That's the sort of thing we need for this, you know, with all the bells and whistles and all the different panels and everything. Uh, something else I've realised when I did the review of this kit, I'm just going to go off track slightly here. When I did the review of this kit, I mentioned that, where is it? They haven't shown it on the, top, on, the, on the actual surface. On this part here, you've got the hole going through and you've got the winch that's on here and underneath there's a load of grills and I was saying about grinding the back out to open them up. It's not actually grills, it's actually um, covers with pressed ridges in them to stiffen them. So don't go take in my advice and open those grills up. Or if you have, fill it in again. Um, so, got the... Um, this is the cyclic, isn't it? Um, so I've got that off. This is the collective. This is the cyclic, I believe. We call the joystick. Sorry, this is the collective, isn't it? Down the side. The cyclic is the, the what we call the joystick, I believe. Tell me if I'm wrong and then I'll remember. Um, the other thing I found out is these pedals here, 
that I've been calling rudder pedals in a helicopter. They are apparently called, yes I'm looking away, they are called anti-torque pedals. So uh, obviously they're used like a rudder pedal to stop the helicopter from turning. So um, I'm guessing, I suppose you put them both together and it puts the wheel brakes on, I don't know. Tell me in the comments, there are going to be people watching this that have flown these actual helicopters. So um, another thing to be aware of, I'm thinking, I'm not sure, again, tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, I'm doing my research and whenever I put in Sky Crane, I seem to get the S64, which is the, the kind of civilian version, if you like, um, whereas this is a CH64, I think it's an S64, isn't it? Whereas this is a CH54. So if you put in CH54, you will get pictures of old cockpits. Um, obviously the new ones are going to be different. There's going to be a lot of upgrades and you don't want to be misguided by, by all that. But there's a hell of a lot of detail. There's you know rib um, stiffeners and all sorts going along inside this cockpit. And with all the glass, I think Edward could really go to town on this. I think if ICM had moulded it all in, um, it probably would have added a lot of value to the kit, a lot of cost and a lot of time. And when you consider what's going on in Ukraine, it's an absolute miracle we've got this thing at all. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Really, really thank you, Ed, um, ICM. Really amazing. So anyway, I've got the parts off for here. A um, little bit of a sink mark in the side of there. So that's filled in with a drop of super glue. Um, I've also noticed, unfortunately, my first complaint, this is why... A lot of people like to see my reviews and stuff because even though I've been given a kit by ICM to review and build, I will always tell you where I see disappointments, like I said about the packaging, and I will tell them the same as I'm saying to you. So it's not like I'm running them down behind their back, but on the same count, just because they've given me a kit or something, I won't, I won't say this is the best thing ever, it's awesome. If it is the best thing ever, I will say it's the best thing ever. It's awesome. Like that border model Stuka. It is awesome. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful model of a, 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 a well-loved kit, a well-loved helicopter. But I have found an issue. Um, if we look on here on the anti-torque pedals, or shall be known as rudder pedals, there's a bloody ejector pin mark right in the face of them there. You can see. So we're going to have to fill them in and it's not going to be that easy to clean up so I'm going to dra gra drag I'm going to grab a drop of my VMS black super glue and just put a drop in like that and let it dry and it will probably shrink back and if we keep putting on and let it shrink back we should end up with a levelish playing field so that's what I'm going to do there um, and I'll do all four you don't need to watch me do all four and you know, like I say, I'm hoping that Edward will do a set for this and go to town because on these pedals, there is actually um, going across, there is some, there's like a riveted strip and then across there's a plain strip and it says Sikorsky. So it would be nice to have that in photo etch and I'm sure Sikorsky would allow you to do it. So tell me if I think, was a Sikorsky... Uh, a Russian guy who was captured in the war, a prisoner of war, and they kept him in America, or did he um, defect to America or whatever? But you know, we, we all think of Westlands, and I think West, a lot of Western helicopters are Sikorsky's built under license, aren't they? But anyway, I'm waffling now. As people tell me, I waffle too much, but some people love my waffling, so for those that like my waffling, Stay tuned for those that don't press the fast forward. Anyway, I'll let that dry. And once I've got those uh, sorted out, then we'll get on with the cockpit assembly. So when I left you last time, I was talking about these rudder pedals. And as you can see, not rudder pedals, they're um, torque, whatever, <laughs> torque dissipators. But uh, there we go. You can see now we've got the um, ejector pin marks in there filled. I got over, I went over some Mr. Surfacer and just sanded it down. So uh, they're pretty much disappeared now. Um, I may actually give another layer looking at that. That may actually still have an indentation in it, but uh, we shall see. Um, obviously got all the parts off, ready to go. Main instrument panel and the centre console. Centre console is made up of three parts, one each side. And then you've got the main part on the top. And then the, the instrument panel has a block on the back of it and it goes down. And you can see here that, you know, when we come down the super detailing route, you've got all these gauges on the back of the instrument panel just crying out to have some cables put in them and wrapped round and going into, you know, into here or something in, up under there, perhaps. 
and uh, you know being very visible through that beautiful clear canopy and you can see when this goes on it um it will all be when you look up through the nose it will all be quite visible looking through the glass so uh, yeah um as i say if edward's watching which i very much doubt they are we need uh grills and fans because i drilled this out this is a these go down in the front so i drilled those out and they are we need a fan and a grill for each side of those because they are basically fans that blow up past the uh the pilot's feet um we need plates to go on the pedals that have sikorsky uh etched in across the top of them and um basically when i look i found a 3d uh, not 3d a 360 of a um ch54b cockpit and it's a 360 you can go around and look all up and down and there is a hell of a lot of structure uh, around the side walls of the cockpit that's not included in the kit um and there's sort of bits and pieces of bracketry all around and in this area down here that's not included so the aftermarket you know edward could make a beautiful set and probably sell quite a lot um like i like i said earlier you know more like the academy huey than the trumpeter sam the the and the chinook uh, because the Trumpeter Chinook is just like seat belts, really, and an instrument panel, uh, whereas the Academy UH1C is like everything. So that's what we need, please, Edward, if you're watching. Uh, one other thing I want to say: this stick here, this is actually the collective for the starboard, the right-hand seat, um, and you can see here it's made up of three parts because you can see these two shafts here. They're butting up to here, and they're they're very it's very very flimsy because it's only half a half a shaft. I don't really know why they've moulded it like that. It's probably to get the indentation in the end. But basically, this area here that I'm going to point out to you becomes very very weak. You can see there where I'm pointing. There. Uh, so I've put some black super glue on to try and sort of stiffen it up because it's a very very weak point and it just wants to snap off. So be very careful of that. You know, it's it's that weak that if you dry brushed it, it would probably break off. So uh, worth um, taking a bit of care with that one. So that's all the parts off of there. Those fans I talked about are H74 and H75. And as you can see, they are now drilled through. So we've got daylight coming through them. So they look a bit more realistic. Um, as I say, this is an out-of-the-box build for, uh, for ICM. So we won't be adding anything to this. I may actually add some seat belts because I can't bear the thought of all that lovely glass and no seat belts. We shall see. Um, so got all those parts off so we can get all that assembled and then when we go over the page we're looking at assembling the seats obviously I won't glue the seats to the floor we've got this panel here which is that was going to get glued to the floor before we paint we can add that panel in down there we can add this piece here so I'm going to get all those parts off the sprue and the objective here is to get a load of assembly done and get it all primed in black um, and then we'll get ready with the grey paint to get it all painted uh, grey and choose which colour grey we're going to use Okay, so um, <clears throat> as my regular followers of my channel will know, I do tend to like to make sub-assemblies and paint them. A lot of modellers prefer to paint everything and then build it. There is no wrong or right way. Um, the only advantage I feel to doing it my way is I'm going to glue all this together now, and then I, so I've got plastic to plastic rather than having any paint. So the paint is not going to cause any weak joints or dodgy joints or whatever. Um, the disadvantage to it is that I have got to then go in and detail paint uh, where I want to change any colours. So if I wanted to paint these pedals silver and I wanted to paint these blue and the floor black, I've got to paint everything black and then do the detail painting afterwards. Having said that, if I painted these silver and blue before I put them on, Chances are when I glue them on, the glue, the paint would get damaged. So it's sort of a six of one, half a dozen the other. So I'm going to go on and do this, this assembly here. So we've got these little fans that go in. And I'm going to grab my Tamiya Extra Thin and put it on top of my sticker there. And just put a drop in there. And then put that fan into that hole. And that can just sit there and we'll have it nice and square like that. I think they probably move around, but we'll just have them square. And I believe they're going to be quite visible through that glazing. So we want them to be um, nice and sort of 
square and everything. That's one good thing about me doing this build. If you're sort of hanging off and holding on for the aftermarket, then you will be able to see from this build what is actually visible and what isn't. Um, I know we've got the, if you haven't seen it already, there is a, a sort of uh, a CAD exploded assembly, if you like. You can see all the parts coming together in a CAD model type form. It's by ICM. It's very well done. It's on the ICM's YouTube channel. I think they've done it for a few of their models. It's worth a look. It's good. Now, I'm just going to put another drop of cement in here because I really don't want any of this to go falling off. So I'm going to put cement from the inside because I don't think you'll be able to see from the inside. And I'm just looking at this now. I'm going to be fitting this bulkhead and this bulkhead down here. Maybe I should be leaving off anything that's going to get broken off. So I think maybe we'll call that a day for that. And then I'll, I'm, this is where I'm saying about build sequences. Um, you know, we can go on and do all this. We can fit all the, the, um, the cyclic and the, uh, I've got it written now, I keep forgetting, cyclic and collective um, um, columns and everything. But when we come to here, um, we're fitting this bulkhead here and we're fitting this piece down here to underneath the floor. Um, I think we're going to be having to fill in sand or whatever, um, you know, Mr. Surfacer, super glue, whatever, and sand. So it's probably not a good idea to have loads of bits and pieces hanging out. So I think what I'll do is rather than do any of this, I think I'll go along and I'll fit this bulkhead and this lower section here. So let's have a look. Um, so that's going to go in under there. Okay, so that fits in there nicely. So I'm just going to, I don't normally pre-glue, but I'm going to do it on this occasion because there's a seam. And the reason I don't pre-glue pre is if you do this, you generally get glue or molten plastic oozing out. But if it's going to be a repaired joint, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so put some glue behind there. Or cement, should I say, I get told off what I call it, glue. There we go. So that's that in place. So what we'll do is let that dry and then we'll get some super glue in there and then we'll sand it back when it's dry. And then this bulkhead here, I have actually test fitted this. This actually, I've got some sanding dust in there. This actually goes, be careful with this one because you've got this, this lip on the bottom and you, when you put it in, you want to put that lip underneath, but it doesn't go underneath. The lip it goes flush with the floor. It's very weird. So that lip is going flush with the floor. What it's actually doing is actually pushing. It's actually pushing this bulkhead away. You can see we've got a gap, like a step down in there. So I'm tempted to sort of sand some of this away. I may actually grab the fuselage half. If I can grab it easily, do, 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 do. it would be right on the bottom of the bottom pile of sprues. Careful with all this detail. Uh, so that's going to go in there like that. That's going to, oh I see, we've got no, we've got no physical location for anything in here other than the very front edge. So I'm assuming that's going to be fine. So what we'll do, I am going to remove some of that step. So I'm going to remove most of it, if not practically all of it. There we go, it fits nice and flush now. That's much better. So what we can do is plop that in there. And we'll put some glue in there. Get plenty in there. Get some down there as well. If you notice I'm using this glue, you're probably thinking if you're going to fill it with super glue, why don't you just use super glue? The reason being is super glue tends to be a little more brittle. So this will get a far better weld action going on 
than the actual super glue on I'm just looking here that floor is going up I'm wondering if that floor is actually not straight no it's not you can see the floor is bowed so we will just give a little tweak to that floor that's better and when it dries it will dry straight this of course is unavoidable with molding because it comes out of the mold tool and it's a large flat area and it's and again I say remember guys all this is being done by a country in a factory that's got all sorts going on overhead and around them so it's a miracle that we ever got this at all to be honest so there we go and I'm not going to put there's this piece here then goes on this piece here sits on like that okay and I'm not going to put that on because I want to be able to sand that seam there so I'm not going to put that on yet because it'll get in the way so we'll let that just go off and then we'll get some super glue in the joint and get some sanding done. So we've got those panels now in and we've got the, the Mr. Surface, not Mr. Surface, I've got um, super glue in there, that'll dry and then we can sand all that back and that'll get rid of those seams. I would use accelerator on there but I've got the other stuff to get on there so I'm not really worried about that. Right, so the seats, um, we have the pilot seats here, there's two of them and then we have the, I don't know, is that the engineer's seat, the guy that deals with the lifting? I'm not sure. Um, so basically we have here, this is the, this is the back of the, we'll call him the engineer seat, um, and this is the base of that seat. So that's going to go onto there like that. So that fits like that. And as you can see, I'm doing all this gluing together and then we'll do some detail painting, which I probably won't do on camera because I generally don't do painting on camera. Um... So we'll just run some glue across there, down there and down there, and then we'll get this sort of um, in the position and then quickly offer up this backrest because that's what's going to determine the position of that there. So get some glue into there. Just like so. And that's that. So that's that seat done. Um, as I said, this is all very kind of simplistic in here. Um, I may be adding some texture to these seats just to make them look a bit more interesting. But it's all very, uh, there's a bit of a gap there. So I'm going to shove some glue in there, or cement, and give it a good squeeze. You can often fill little gaps like that. It's not really going to be seen anywhere. Although I think actually there could be a window going around that side. But uh, it's all going to be painted and washed and everything anyway. So, And I'm sure that's going to fit in there. Okay, let's just test it quickly to make sure the back's not going to foul. There you go, that's perfect. So that's going to be absolutely fine. So that's that seat done. And then the actual pilot and co-pilot seat. Do you know, I can't remember which side is which. Which side's the pilot and which side's the... The co-pilot, or are there no pilots and co-pilots in these? Maybe it's two guys at the same level. Who knows? Um, so this backrest is going to go on here. You'll notice there's an ejector pin mark on the seat there. No need to fill it. It's covered by the by the seat squab. So I'm going to put some cement into the bottom here. And then that can run around like so. And then the base has doesn't have a very positive location. But uh, it has sorry, sorry, it has a positive location, but it has a very small contact area. So get some glue behind there. Just like so, get that glued down. So there's our seat. Now these are going to go into the floor. 
and the only location they've got is those two legs so they're basically going to sit in like that and that's it so we'll have to be careful once they're in not to go knocking things around because they'll uh, fall off otherwise they'll break away so do the same again get this one get the back on get some cement in there I've just got some on my finger I think it ran across the front and then this base seat squab should I say can go in get some glue into there and then just nudge it around until it's in the correct position they're very nice seats but they are quite simple there's quite a lot missing um, there should be like a steel frame on the back of it I think it's across uh, there should be a loop over the top with the harness is coming through the harness comes back over here and, and links into a, a point in the middle of the seat at the back if you go and look at the Edward um, Academy Huey UH1C photo etch set uh, you'll see on there the belt so we could actually use the belts from that set I've got that set but I've also got the kit so I don't really want to use a whole interior set just for the belts in here but um, I have got some photo etch buckles from a niece I may make some tape I, I don't know um, I really need to do this out of the box but it's like having no belts is going to be it's just going to look so bare in there isn't it I don't know we shall see we'll see how it looks so that's the seats made up. So now I'm back to um, square one and waiting for things to dry. I think I'm going to add this. This is the little uh, instrument panel here for the engineer or the guy that deals with the lifting. I guess he's the load master, is he? I don't know. That's going to go on there like that. And hopefully you can see that my... My theory is, is to get as much glue together as I can and I've got some oozage there so I'm just going to run the brush over the top and that will take away any oozage that's there. I've got a decal going on there. This panel here, this is G80 and G82, you can see it here and it has the, the third pilot's um, joystick on it. There's a decal going on there and the decal actually goes over where the joystick goes so I would fit the decal first and then fit the joystick. Um, and that is basically about that my friends so what I can do now is cross off those because they're done um, I can cross off these because they're done I cross off those because they're done um, and we can cross off that one and we can cross off that one so there we go so I'll get all that sanded out and then we'll start looking at how much we're going to assemble how far we're going to go. I've also got these two parts here, H96, I haven't put a line through them. I've got H96 and F45, that's like a step, a footrest for the, you can see it there. It's a footrest for the um, for the third pilot, I'm going to call him. And uh, I want to put that onto the floor so it's all painted in one again. So, um, we're pretty much there with the cockpit. We're basically just going to glue all this together, paint what we're going to do and then we're going to get it into the fuselage halves and then we're done so uh, it's all coming together quite nicely and we're back so as you can see I've done all the sanding down there and sort of blended them in um, I'm going to need to add this piece here when I'm happy that all that sanding is done and that will fit in there and I'm going to glue that and I'm going to clamp it in place and let that dry before I do any painting I had forgotten that so um, you can see now why that I left that out because I've been able to sand across there now, blend all that out into each other and then we can get that on there and clamp it. So um, for some reason we've managed to pick up a load of hair. I don't know where from. I know Clive has the trouble with his cat getting on his bench but I don't have a cat. So I have a Jess and she is, today is Monday the 27th of uh, February 2023 and she is currently at the vets having bladder stones removed so... They've called me, said she's had the operation and she's absolutely fine. It all went well. So um, that's really good. There's also, I've just noticed, there's an ejector pin mark there I need to fill in. I'd forgotten about that one. There's an ejector pin mark in the front of there. 
that I would suggest filling in just in case it sticks out like a sore thumb when you put some grey paint in there and give it a wash. So I just put some um, super glue in there. I've glued all these in. The rudder pedals, sorry, not the rudder pedals, they're torque biasing pedals, I think. You can see there, if you look close up, I've put a drop of that black super glue in around the joints just to give them an extra bit of support because they're on a, a very scale like tiny little pin. Um, and probably just a tap would snap them off. So that rather than have them snapped off, I'll just put that little bit of black thin VMS super glue in there just so it can soak around there and just fill in the joint, fill in any gaps and give it a bit of, you know, sort of act as a little buttress sort of thing. Um, same as it on there. So I've glued in the collective levers, I've glued in the cyclics. So uh, that's all good. Obviously I'm glued in the seats, we'll paint those separately. Um, sanded all this down here i now need to actually add before we do any painting i'm going to add this this footrest in here and then there's two supports that go up underneath so i'll add them um so there in fact we'll do that now so what i'll do is put this plate come here i'll put this plate in place make sure it goes the right way around with the holes facing out i need to make sure i don't drop any of this because it will snap all those levers off but the reason i've done that is because I want to be able to paint everything in situ. There we go. Now what happened there, I'm glad that's happened, it's a mistake. You can see what happens if you glue first and then put the cement in after and put the part in after, that's what happens. Now I had the part hanging out of the groove and the problem is you get the glue oozing out. So that's why I always put the parts together first. I'm going to grab my tweezers and grab these here so I'm assuming I'll just have a look in the instructions those parts are going in with their yeah with their legs up in the plate so there's a little you can see on here there's a little leg on them so oops I got this the wrong way around so that's going to go into there and then there's a hole up in there which is going to sit in beautifully like that so there we go so we'll take a drop of extra thin in there and a drop of extra thin in there and then I'm going to grab the other one wherever it may be I'm going to turn it around because it's the wrong way around drop that in there whoops no oh, no I've dropped it on the floor now I'll tell you what I'm going to get that and then I'll come back there we go, I got it in there. So there's those two pipes pipes in there. And then we've got the up right there, that's a column a, 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 for air pipes or bloody wires or hydraulic lines or something. So uh, that's there. Um, so basically now I'm ready to get all this painted. You will notice, I told you about the ejector pin mark there to deal with. There's also four small ones in there which go on this piece. And this piece actually fits in here in those two holes and it's visible through those side windows there so uh, basically get rid of those ejector pin marks now there's lots and lots of little bits and pieces as I said before that if you want to really dress this cockpit up I would seriously wait because I'm sure I'm 99.9% .9 sure the aftermarket are going to jump all over this and I think some very very carefully bent and glued in and fitted photo etch in here it's just going to look out of this world. If you look at the real thing and you look at this, you know, what's not there because you can't do it with plastic like you can with photo etch. It's going to look absolutely amazing. I'm sure Edward will jump on the bandwagon. I'm sure of it. I may even send them an email link to that 360 cockpit thing I found because that will really, really help them in deciding what to do and what not to do. Um, I believe there should be a fire extinguisher on this wall here. And there isn't one. Um, there's something else on that wall as well. But basically, um, there's lots and lots you can do to make it really, really pop. And I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm building this out of the box because this is the ICM build, if you like. And we're going to see what you can get out of the box. Um, so basically, as I say, that's all the cockpit done. The only thing I've got to do now is get the front and the sides off and paint those internally at the same time I paint all this. And then when we come back for part two, we will be looking at assembling all of this, obviously painting all of this grey, getting the decals on. We've got a decal to go on the instrument panel 
here there's nothing for the centre console. We have a deco for the third pilot's um, place there and we have a deco for his joystick as well. So uh, we'll get that on. Um, just another thing I wanted to mention quickly is this little joystick here that goes on, it goes in that hole there. Um, I'll put that on when I fit this because obviously if I put it there now it's likely to get knocked. And the reason that's all clamped in place is because it's pulled everything together. I've just run some glue around then I don't get any oozage as I said before. But we have to be really really careful with this we don't knock it about and start knocking these pedals off and stuff and particularly these columns. But the beauty is with this kit a lot of these greeblies come from the H-sprues and as you know we have four of them. So when it comes to Anything you see with an H, there are four of those parts. So we've got, if we had a H17 and H18, we would have eight of them, but we've actually got two more spares. So if we do break them off, we've got a spare. This is all G, unfortunately, so we don't have spares of those. Rudder pedals, 12 and 13, so we've got a spare set of, I keep calling rudder pedals, spare set of those fans. Um, and then coming back here, we've used two seats. So we've got another spare pair of seats. Um, and that's basically that. So really, really good all in all. This piece here, A7, is actually an insert that goes inside. You can see here how this is angled off. There is actually a wall, um, a roof in the um, cockpit, and it looks like it's actually padded. Not the diamond padded, just a loose hanging blanket. So that's something else you could be looking into adding as well. But as I say, this one's out of the box. And on the subject of H... Um, as I mentioned in my review, we have all the parts in here to make four engines. So just think, if you could have four engines, think of the diorama possibilities. You know, you could have this parked up, ladders, trestles, whatever, guys there working on the engine, an M48 tracked vehicle with a brand new engine in the back of it, you know, because you've got a spare. So you can have the two on here, have them working on getting one disconnected, and then a brand new shiny engine in here you could perhaps blow the other engine up or make a hole in the side of it put some soot around whatever like it said a, a turbine blade go something like that you know the, the sky's the limit um so i've been looking through the instructions and with the engines we actually have they're all h so we've got um four of each of those four of each of those four of each of those uh so we can actually make four engines all this is h here all of this is H, so we've got all those parts there. The only time we don't have an H is when we get to here, F42. And on the other side, we have F43, and that's the rear turbine where the exhaust goes on. So if you wanted to do an engine that's showing just the turbine without the exhaust fitted, you can because it's got a bladed, um, a riveted ring around there, or bolted ring, and you've got the blades there. Um, so if you wanted to do that, you could, but unfortunately, because, in fact, I'm looking at those parts, they're H as well. Yeah, they're H as well, so you could even have those. And the shafts as well, the main drive shafts that come out, they're all H. So we'll have four complete engines. So what I've done, naughty as I am, I've made a mould. So those parts are now in a silicon mould, so that I can mould another two, and then I could have four engines. So you can have two on there, two in the back of a wagon, two being removed with a gantry over the top, whatever. The sky's the limit. You could really, really go for it. So um, there we are. I've waffled enough. So our cockpit is basically done, um, built, ready for painting and decaling and weathering and chipping and all that sort of stuff. So we'll get all that done in part two. So I will see you for that. Um, as I say, my videos do uh cover everything so you ain't getting like your um scale model aircraft is it called where you get like a 40 minute video start to finish you're not going to get that with me you're going to get a full build sequence so you can follow along and any little hiccups i find out along the way i will tell you about um no real hiccups with this at all uh if anything the only problem we've had is this area here where it's very very weak because of the design of the parts because they're to scale and on these rudder pedals or whatever they're called, um, the mountings for them are very, very weak because they're to scale. So that's it. Um, there we are. So I'm going to get some black primer on a see how it all looks, deal with anything that I need to deal with. 
and then we'll go from there and I'll come back with it all ready to go in part two. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all soon. I'm bye for now.